Hello everyone, this is Dr. Raghubir, Director School of Innovation, Kumaraguru School of Innovation from Coimbatore region. Today I am going to talk about innovating education and educating for innovation. So the purpose of this talk is to sensitize all you people on why do we need to innovate education. So due to the emergence of AI, the industries are getting heavily impacted uh, in the way they operate. So it is very much necessary for the academia to ensure that it is innovating in all possible ways. When it comes to innovating education, it starts with innovating the way the curriculum is being designed. Academia sees curriculum as just a set of subjects which go into the bundle of the list of subjects that the student is going to do. But however, curriculum should not be seen that way. A curriculum which is being prepared for the various programs done by the students should be considering all the local, regional, national and international requirements and the way the trends and technologies will emerge in the near future. So in such a way, the holistic curriculum will ensure that the student as a learner will be able to get all the benefits out of the curriculum and is able to learn in a most effective manner possible. When it comes to innovating uh, education, it's not only the curriculum that should be focused upon, it is also the teaching learning practices which are being adopted by the institutes. With the emergence of technology, teacher's role is not just teaching inside the class, it is more of being a facilitator who enables the students to think out of the box and come out with some innovative solutions. When it comes to innovating the teaching learning practices, teachers should be adopting innovative teaching learning practices like flipped classroom, self-learning, peer learning and all such things inside the classroom. So one another way of innovating the teaching learning practice is to allow the students to undergo informal learning. Informal learning is where the student will not be given the content in the structured way as it used to be in a traditional curriculum based courses rather the teacher will be randomly choosing a problem uh, through which when the student is able to solve the problem they will be able to attain certain learning outcome in the process the student will be undergoing a list of learning learning which can be through self-learning or through the introduction of some concepts and technologies by the industry responsible which is giving the problem or and followed by the student will be putting hands-on with respect to the practice on the way the problems are being solved Finally, when the student is able to do the learning and solve the problem through a set of activities, they have to benchmark it with the international level uh, peer competitive groups wherein they can test whether the problem being solved by them is of certain level which is matching with the international and national requirements. So informal learning is one way of innovating the teaching learning process. The other way is flipped learning. Flipped learning is where most of the learning uh, which normally happens inside the class are monotonous in nature where the teacher himself or herself is delivering the sessions and students are being able to learn whatever the teacher is giving inside the class and whatever the assignments and exercises that the teacher gives to the students which is usually of the higher order thinking the student has to get back work with their fellow mates at their free time and then they have to come out with the answers for that since students do not get enough time to collaborate outside the classrooms, mostly they end up copying the contents and submitting it in the form of assignments. So what is happening here is only the lowermost order of learning is happening inside the class and the highermost order of learning which is required in order for them to be innovative and creative is not at all happening. To overcome this particular problem, students must be encouraged to learn something which is relevant to the class prior to coming to the class and the teacher should act as a facilitator inside the classroom enabling them to learn more through collaboration. It is through the peer learning, the students will be able to get best of the learning possible and also will be able to solve problems in innovative and creative ways where teacher acts only as the facilitator. So having said about innovating curriculum and innovating teaching learning process, it is more important for this uh, education system to ensure that the students are given experiential learning as much as possible. Whatever happens inside the classroom, four walls inside the classroom alone can't be the learning for life for the students. So students should be allowed to learn in multiple spaces and multiple time zones. So this is what we call as a global degree model, wherein this part of the learning will be happening inside the classroom and the part of the learning will be happening with the global peers collaborated in a virtual learning environment or an immersive learning environment like augmented reality, virtual reality, extended reality, collectively called as metaverse for education. And another part of learning can really happen by students going to the international context where they will be associating with some universities, allowing them to collaborate with the peers from across the world 
depending upon the choice of specialization. One more important thing that the students must be given when it comes to innovating education is the domain-based education. Current education trends do not allow the students to think of domains until they come to the final year of study. As they are progressing over the years, they are just studying subjects and they are just accumulating the knowledge as much as possible. And when it comes to practically applying whatever they have learned over the period of time, it is not ending up properly with respect to an application area which we call as domain. To overcome this particular problem, what we can try is introduce the domains as early as possible to the students right in their first year of study. A domain may be something like uh, the field where the learnings can be applied. For example, agriculture, healthcare, energy, transportation can be the kind of domains that we can talk about. There are n number of domains which are emerging as well. So all that we need to do is to ensure that the students are sensitized at their early years of education to tell them exactly what is the importance of domain in terms of applying whatever they learn over the period of time. These domains greatly help the students in trying to visualize what they have learned and try to solve real world problems. Whenever they solve real world problems and they see the results in front of their eyes, it will definitely motivate them to learn more as well as solve more problems. In turn, it will be automatically giving the happiness that is needed for them, which is the primary goal of any education environment. Having said about innovating education, the next important thing is educating the students for innovation. As the world is emerging very fast and technologies are playing a vital role in reshaping the way the industries are operating, it's time for the students to be prepared in such a way that they are able to co-work with the emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and not losing their jobs as a result of these emergent technologies. All this requires is to allow the students to be creative and innovative because they must be curious enough to understand what they need to learn and where they need to apply. So in order to make the curious uh, curiosity to be there in the students and make them more innovative, we need to start creating the mindset of innovation for the students. Where does it all start? It all starts with the students exactly understanding the 360 degree of a problem. So what is the drawback with the current uh, generation of students is that since they are very much accessible to technology, the moment you, we suggest them a problem, they will immediately start working towards solving it, but without understanding the holistic nature of the problem itself. Because the moment they understand the 360 degree of the problem and the kind of stakeholders involved with that problem, they will be able to understand wide variety of solutions that can solve that problem more effectively. So this can happen through the introduction of design thinking at the early stages of their education so that this will help them to understand to, uh, the overall perspective of the problem and try to come out with innovative ways of solving this problem. So having said this innovation mindset, because innovation is all about the psychology and the mindset than learning something related to business. And innovation and entrepreneurship need not be connected all the times. We need to prepare the students to be innovative. The students who are being innovative will definitely end up solving problems and if they are able to solve problems and entrepreneurship fundamentals are known to them, they'll be able to scale that solution for the benefit of many people. That results in solving more bigger problems, resulting in commercialization of all those things. So entrepreneurship is just one particular outcome, but the base for entrepreneurship is innovation. Entrepreneurship without innovation will not be sustainable and it will not be able to uh, solve the real problem for which that particular entrepreneurship venture has emerged. So in the age of emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, data science, robotics, IoT and all, the most important thing is to create that innovation mindset for the students. This can very much happen by connecting them to the domain of study. As I told earlier, it may be relevant to the agriculture, healthcare, energy, environment, any domain which is close to their heart. Towards this, the student should be allowed to do a set of subjects which are over and beyond the stream of study that will allow them to wide, uh, widespread their knowledge from the other domains than that of the arts, science, engineering or any other streams. This will help them to deep dive into the respective domains, understanding more in, in depth about the way the domains operate because it is more important for them to understand the economy around the domain, the financial aspects involved in solving a problem and the effective way of marketing their solutions or pitching their solutions to the prospective 
capitalists who can consider their idea and start investing on it. So having said that innovation is a mindset and the domain is a way to make them to align their innovation too and the technology can only be a tool rather than seeing education from the perspective of learning a technology it should be seen from the holistic perspective of the purpose for which that particular education is being taken by the student be it engineering be it management science or medicine the ultimate goal is to ensure that they become a successful engineer manager doctor scientist or whatever it is that requires deep rooted fundamentals logical thinking critical thinking design thinking and trying to align a particular domain which will give them the purpose of education this is the only and effective way by which we can innovate education and prepare the students towards developing solutions which are innovative and out of the box thank you very much for the opportunity Thank you.